Thoughts and comments with Andrew Urquhart. And I appreciate that you may be hearing this live on the radio. You may be watching this on YouTube. You may be watching it on Shine TV. This is the the nature of things. But however you are listening into this conversation, kia ora. No, my haere mai, you're most welcome, and welcoming to the studio, Justin Smith. Kia ora, thank you for your time. Ata mari, happy to be here. Now, a big announcement last week for the Rima Media Network, this um, this little thing called Sanctuary, uh, launching in um, early 2025, mm-hmm. and this has been something which you've been at least knee-deep in for some time now, right? (laughs) Uh, Yes, you could say I've been very close to it. In fact, you could say it has been almost the entirety of mine and half of the team's existence um, for the last number of weeks and months. And now, very excited about this uh, this new offering that Rima Media is bringing in the new year. But it raised a question, I suppose, about the difference between... um, live to air and on demand between mm. a situation of, oh, you know, this is um, linear, this is, is going out. If you want to listen to, for example, today with Jeff Fines, you have to tune in at a certain time. And the situation we had last week as well with the appeal where it was like, you can listen to Jeff Fines anytime you like. He's available on the website, rima.co.nz. That's a different way of listening. Is this the way of the future, Justin? <laughs> Uh, yeah, it is the way of the future. And so what we're what you're talking about is this crux, this intersection of, you know, uh, appointment viewing, which yep. is l- linear broadcast. And historically, when that was the only option, we were completely fine with that. And yep. now with the advent of technology and internet and the delivery of content, you know, that is just always available, so much of it, and we can consume it at our own will and on demand, it's kind of a lot easier to sort of do that, and therefore appointment viewing and linear broadcast sort of falls by the wayside for a lot of people. It does, although, hey, don't throw out your your AM radio just yet because I imagine that more people will engage with this content currently uh, on the radio than in a digital format. But something which is a phenomenon that I've seen recently, like if, if people are listening to this live now, if they miss the beginning of the conversation, well, that's gone. Mm. However, uh, this conversation also being recorded, it's also being filmed, and the amount of people that engage with it can build over time. So it's not just, oh, no, I missed that. Uh, But, hey, this week a certain number of people may watch it. That number may grow over time. With with digital, with on-demand engagement, you can get some pretty large numbers over a, a longer period of time. Yeah, absolutely. But the the one uh, trick is that you are in an enormous ocean of content. Yeah. So the competition for attention uh, in, in the internet is absolutely enormous. Here in New Zealand, we've spoken about this in the past, where as a broadcaster over you know the airwaves, both television and radio, you yeah. know we have a certain level of competition. And the pool with which we are trying to get atten- people's attention is limited to the populace of New Zealand. The minute you go to the internet, now you're competing with content from the likes of Netflix, YouTube, these massive platforms. And so it's imperative for when we put content into those spaces that actually we're really mindful about what it is that we're putting out there and how we can compete with those other massive players for a wider audience's attention. And, and hey, we're not just um, talking about, hey, this may happen in the future sometime. It's something very interesting I found about over the weekend, actually. The amount of people that watch the US election, you'd think, oh gosh, the numbers would be massive for that. So many people glued to their set to see what you know whether these key battleground states mm. whether they're going to go blue or red less people watch the US election live than ever before well not ever before of course but in recent years yeah. the numbers were really down mm. but a huge number of people watched um, Donald Trump speak with Joe Rogan on a podcast <laughs> in fact that was there was a, a lot more people watching Joe Rogan speak to Donald Trump than we're watching the election coverage. I think that that says something about the way we're tracking. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, for one, you know, the US election, while it is a massively global uh, attention-gathering event, at the same time, waiting until 3 a.m. for yep. Pennsylvania to make a decision as to whether or not <laughs> it's going this way or the other. It's not everyone's jam. I get no, that. No, exactly. Yeah. And so for the people in the US, I think they'd gone to bed a huge portion of them long before that. But for the rest of the world, yeah. I mean, the going back to what I said before about competing in the market and creating content that really, really captures people's attention. Joe Rogan, you know, renowned for being one of the earliest adopters of podcasting and has amassed this massive audience. People understand when they tune into his platform the type of content they're going to get, a level of quality, and when you have this sort of crashing of 
renown through Joe Rogan, his platform, his own personal brand, and the type of content that he creates, and then the personality like Donald Trump and yep. others in the past that he's had too that have just amassed huge, you know, viewership. You're just bound to hit that sweet spot of viewership where people can consume on demand through audio, through video, optimized for this and that and the other platform, and it's just a huge surge in numbers compared to linear broadcasts. Now, Sanctuary had been described as digital first. Mm. I mean, this is an example of that and an opportunity perhaps for people to uh, curate a more personal experience of, of how they engage with media? Yeah, idealistically, the the future is very, very, very exciting. And in yep. fact, I just came out of a, um, a meeting an hour and a half ago with some certain components uh, for Sanctuary. Oh, man, I really wish I could say what they were. Okay. But they will come. Stay listening for details. 100% stay tuned in because it's really exciting the things that we're able to do, particularly with this new offering, this new brand. It's fantastic yep. to be able to um, be a part of a brand new brand launch, entering into the niche within the niche that Rima Media here sort of owns and dominates. Yep. And then and putting out something that we feel, you know, really heartfelt that this is going to be something amazing for everyone, for so many different, um, you know, people across demographics, across psychographics, and it's yep. just something different. And to the point about consumption, you know, post-launch, once you've actually got the station humming, you've got the people with their feet under the desk, and we understand how it sounds and how we all sort of work together, the opportunities for us to create digital content and make that a priority for this brand, ooh, it's exciting. It is very exciting indeed. Now, hey, there are some things I know that you cannot comment about. Mm -hmm. However, I'm going to speculate and I'm going to judge your facial reactions. You're going to be doing sort of a live version of emojis okay, in the studio great. at the moment. So Sanctuary launching in early February, it is going to be the home of worship music. That is going to be its flavor. That is going to be its brand. If you want worship music any time of day, uh, Sanctuary is the place to go for that. Mm -hmm. Things that could happen in this space or a similar space, like we saw last week during the appeal, spoken programs on demand, is this, is this a possible future? Is this a possible future? Absolutely it is. Not just limited to Sanctuary, but to all of the brands within Rima Media. That's a, that's a yes, I take it. Um, a podcast. Now, we do podcasts in different ways here as, as part of Rima Media. An integrated space, is podcasts along with your worship music? Absolutely, and again, not just limited to your worship your worship station. Yeah, sanctuary. but but I suppose having a, a hub where people can connect with these is hub too old a word. Am I am I getting my jargon wrong for this one? No, funnily enough, actually, that's been a really interesting uh, sort of point. Is within the sanctuary that we want to create for our listeners. Yeah. Um, you know, this is their sanctuary. It is your sanctuary, um, mm -hmm. and it is named as such. But what do we actually call that repository of content podcasts not limited to videos as well yeah. all centered around worship music hub is kind of the word that we've hung up on for now but it will change yeah, yeah. but to okay. answer the question yes and i just want to throw one more in there audio bible on demand asking for a friend <laughs> within the realm of possibility i'm i'm getting a i'm getting a smiling emoji on this one do i read anything into that justin everything is possible okay not everything is available to be able to done at any given point in time. But hey, the future looks bright. Uh, certainly looking forward to Sanctuary being a part of what Rima Media is offering. Justin, thanks for what you do. Thanks for joining us. Anytime. Hey, thanks very much for joining us in the Rima studio. Thanks very much for watching the interview. It's kind of nice to have an audience, actually. And if you did like what you watched, then do give us a like, do give us the thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more interviews like that one, or perhaps even better, subscribe and those interviews will come straight to you. Don't forget to turn on your notifications and we'll see you in the next one. Cheers.